All right, hey, it's time for another update on the Highlander. And uh, I've got some cool stuff to show you. It's been a little while again. So I've been working away at it. And most of what I've been doing now is kind of finish work on the fuselage, trying to get it ready so that when I uh, get ready to do some avionics wiring and motor, um, I'm good to go. So I want to talk about what I've been doing and uh, also show it to you. And I hope you guys like what I've got going. Um, a lot of work up to this point, and I'm pretty stoked about it. So, hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Share it with your friends if they're builders of any other kind of airplane. And I'd uh, love to, uh, to get you guys subscribed. So I'm going to show you a whole bunch of cool things. Hope you guys like it. You know, again, a lot of this stuff is just my ideas or ideas that um, I've gotten from other people. And, again, my very first build. So, you know, go easy on me if you don't like something. Um, so I'm going to show you and uh, kind of some cool stuff. So I'm going to back up here because I want you to get the full effect of where we are at. So that is where we're at right now. So I have the fuselage fully painted. Um, it's back on the landing gear. And again, those are baby tires. Those are just for uh, the purposes of being able to go in and out of my shop, and if I put big ones on, it wouldn't make it out right there. Um, all of my tail feathers, all of my flaps, ailerons, turtle deck, uh, tank covers, which I think you saw in some other pictures, everything is painted, everything is done, and all finished and ready to go and put on. Uh, they're just in the house in a room down in the basement where they're protected. I haven't put them on just because, you know, space is tight. We're talking about 13 feet across the width of my small shop, and I'm about, I don't know, 35 or 40 feet long. It's just, I just don't want to be banging into uh, the horizontal every time I go around it and just keep it cleaner. So let me show you what I've been doing. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of finish work. Like when you get done painting, here's the biggest thing. After you're done painting, uh, and this is, I think, Advantage Oratex. You gotta, no matter what you've done, no matter how much more effort you put into taping, it, there's overspray. So I've been going through and I've been painting up my, um, you know, areas like this joints, just cleaning them up, taping, repainting, making them black, kind of blackening everything else up and, and getting all of this stuff redone. Installed my gear. My, my uh, tail wheel, that's all in and done. So here's kind of cool. So I did finish this. This is in, I just, the, the plastic's still on it. I am gonna have another cut right here uh, so that when the elevator's on, um, it's got its plenty, free, range, free motion or full motion, full range of motion right there, free motion. <laughs> and, uh, but these are all set in place and ready to go. So kind of show you the other side too. So it's, it's on and ready, which I think that turned out really good. I'm excited about it. I think that's going to look really nice. And then obviously here we are, you know, installed tailwheel. This turned out really nice right here. So this is where I talked about in a previous video, having the plastic piece that I cut out from that, um, this type of plastic right here. Basically, you know, that's it right there. Cutting pieces out super thin. And I installed it right here underneath the patch. So plastic was glued on, patch over the top of it. And this, you can see why. That bolt, no matter what, even if the material there is there, um, the steward systems, that bolt's gonna be touching, there's gonna be vibration. And I think it'll eventually wear through your fabric. It's not gonna wear through that little piece of plastic. And I mean, what did I add? A gram, you know? And so that's on there. Cool thing, here's uh, got an inspection cover. I did put one of them on. That was so that I could reach in and, and get my shock on. And my piece underneath turned out really, really nice where I did the same thing with the plastic underneath here to protect that in just a super small opening. Here's my um, little fairings for where the cables exit the aircraft. And I had someone kind of point out on a on my last video, they said it looked like I didn't go through the fair leads, the last set of fair leads. And I did notice that, that uh, some of the other Highlanders seemed to come out right there. Well, that freaked me out a little bit. So 
I started looking and sure enough, yeah, on older models, those are, those are, that's where they come out, but they don't. I mean, if you look in mine and I think newer models, that's the exit point right there. So I actually called Steve Henry and he showed him pictures inside and out and he's like, no, nope, that's correct. So that kind of freaked me out, you know, cause you start thinking, oh my gosh, dude, what have I done? So check this out. Here's my, there is my baggage door. It is on and installed. I think it looks awesome. I think it turned out really good. I'm gonna change my cam locks. So I bought these, you know, with the screwdriver and I'm gonna go to the wing cam locks because after doing this, uh, just a couple of times I realize I don't wanna have a screwdriver with me and I don't want to bugger up my door when I'm out there. So um, I think that will work better. But, so there's my door. Check it out. I think it turned out really, really good. And, you know, I ended up putting a bracket on right here, and this does two purposes. It kind of slides on and has a little bit of a friction point right here. And, uh, and then I'm going to put just a teeny bit of foam in here and down here to kind of give it a little bit more of a ceiling point as well as right along here. But, dude, I'm really stoked about that. That turned out super nice. Um, so... There's my baggage door. That turned out really good. Painted, all ready to go. So then, like I mentioned, I've been doing finish, finish work. Just trying to clean up these lines right here and just get things, you know, all the edges where they need to be um, totally cleaned up and straightened out because it's dang hard, dude, by the time you start, um, you start painting and taping. I found it was so dang difficult to get everything masked off on the inside here to not get anything in here when we were painting. I wanna show you this. So this is what I've been working on. You can kind of see these clean edges of black with the yellow. And I've done that kind of all the way around. Check that out right there. And the idea, same with the door down there, the baggage door, hope you can see that. Um, just giving it super clean edges and this was this has taken a lot of work and uh, to get those super, super clean. So I've been working on that as well. And then um, gear, I want to show you some cool things here with the landing gear. So uh, first off, got my brakes in. They're in, they're wired. So I've run my, my brake line. Sorry, they're running along here. They're going to come over and I'm just playing with the carpet. And, and there they are attached to my uh, parking brake and one of the really cool things is um, I'm going to show you this where they go out um, I've put I'm going to turn this light on so you can and there was light <laughs> okay so see that little grommet right there there's a piece of plastic I put inside the fabric glued to it on the bottom painted I'll show you that from the underside Rubber grommet, there's my brake line. It goes through two things, protect the brake line and add just another barrier of water protection and dust protection. And I've done the same thing on this side. So then where they come out, you're gonna see that um, I've done the same thing on the underside. So if you're looking right here, you'll see there's a grommet and that's where it comes out. There's the little plastic piece that's done inside there. And then I put a little bit of this, you know, the mesh protection on. And then in my earlier videos, I talked about this tube that I glued onto my landing gear, you know, out and then covered the carbon fiber tube. Little grommet on the inside right there. So that this, that as that brake line tube goes in there and it's free to move around, um, it reduce, reduces the amount of chafing and uh, kind of protects that up. Then obviously I've been cleaning all these up, but there we go, and then it exits right there. So I think that turned out pretty cool. It was better than what I expected and hoped. And then like I said, I've just been doing touch up and trim clean right there and really trying to make that look good. So I, I'm super excited about, um, about that. And I'll turn this light off now because we don't need it anymore. So, um, playing with the carpet. So, here's another thing. You know, I I don't like the straight sticks. 
I really like the look of and feel of a bent stick. So I'm going with a bent stick. I've had a couple of comments on some pictures I posted. Hey, make sure you can get full, you know, full throw on these. So, you know, there's full, full throw on both. I've sat, I put the seat in cushions and I can go full, full elevator. And, you know, it's barely touching the, touching the goodies in the stomach. So even with a coat on, I think I'm gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna play with those. And if I need to make some changes, um, I will. So now I wanna show you a couple of things that I've been working on that I'm, I'm pleased with that I hope you guys like as well. So I don't like the unfinished look here and, and all the carpet you gotta glue in and I'm still grappling with that. And I just dislike the way that it looked up front. So this is what I've been working on. And this is super lightweight, 16th ounce ABS plastic that I have cut and shaped and made two pieces and then put two little screws with the nut circs on the back to just finish that up. So I was just playing with the carpet to kind of give you the look of what it might look like, you know, with it finished. You know, here's a yellow right there, kind of trim piece, and I'll come around and I'll show you the other side and what I'm talking about there. And then I've done, I've actually, Put an ABS plastic piece in there to see what I think of that. I weighed the aluminum sheet strip, so this strip and that strip, I weighed them on my little scale and the ABS plastic is much lighter. Um, I think it looks pretty good. It really finishes the trim off nice in here. Um, I'm sure there are better ways to do it, but this is how I'm going to do it, just playing with it. And so I was just putting the carpet in to kind of get a feel for how it looked. And, uh, and I'll show you, I hope you can kind of see up in the front right there. I just hate how this was open and um, how it, it looked. You know, you could see the glue lines and the tape. It seems so unfinished and I get it. You know, this airplane's design was originally designed for a 100 horsepower motor. You're going as light as you can, as basic as you can to have a real fun, high performance short takeoff landing airplane. Um, I don't think I've changed that by adding, you know, two or three ounces of ABS plastic, but as you can see, I've made one piece across there that I measured and cut and dremeled and cut and shaved and to get in there and make it one piece um, and fit in there. And it really closes it off nice if you look at that, um, in my opinion, you know. And it's pretty tough to get in there and make it work. And then you can also see, you know, I was doing some real finish work with the black again on the yellow. This was a part I was so disappointed in. It's so hard to get, you know, that finished look. Like here's some spots I got to do a little work on. And you notice you've always got with the Stuart systems and the glue, these rough edges. And I need to, even though that's going to be completely covered, I'm going to tape and trim and paint that off and get that looking better so that my OCD behavior knows it's, <laughs> it's fine, you know? And so, yeah, what do you think about that? I'd love your comments on the ABS plastic, how you think that's finished off um, the interior, you know? Obviously with the seats in here, it looks really good and just tinkering with the carpet. So I'm trying to decide, am I gonna go ABS plastic or am I gonna go the strip of aluminum yellow? I'd love your feedback on that, but you know, this is where I've got my, I, I worked on the black trim and so now I'm kind of figuring out what I'm going to do from here back. I will put in my floor pans. You know, I'm doing the aluminum. I did something kind of fun with them, and I'll show you that in the next, next video. And so, yeah, so brake lines are all, they're all run, connected. I did hook up the um, firewall, and I've got my, you know, remote reservoir, and it's all bracketed on and everything and sitting there, and I just didn't connect those up yet. So then I've also got um, some cool stuff. So I've got my pieces finished here. So let me just, I'm gonna just quick put on, uh, put, those, put one of those on and show you, so hold on. Okay, so let me show you. So I'm getting closer. These are all painted up. <laughs> Project this week, I'm going to put my Plexi in there, but I think everything is kind of coming together really nice. Yeah, I was messing around with these pieces here, just looking and kind of figuring out how I'm gonna do that with my boot cowl and all of that stuff. But I really like the way that that finishes things up. 
you know, and ties it together when you start looking on the inside right there. I just, I, I think it's coming together super nice. So I want to show you something pretty cool. A buddy of mine brought over, Josh Tippett's, great friend of mine. He's got a sweet Harley, big time Harley guy. He brought me over the other day a little ride bell. And that, you've seen them on Harley Davidson's. And the ride bell is pretty cool. So the ride bell is to um, take away gremlins and, you know, protect your ride, protect your bike, the debris that's on the road. That's really what it's for. Uh, take away the, the bad demons. Well, he also told me and sent me a link to check out where, where this came from. And if you go back and you look at the um, history on the ride bell, you'll find a whole bunch of history on the Royal Air Force back in World War II when the pilots began putting flying bells on their airplanes to ward off gremlins and evil spirits and kind of take the curse off their plane so that they could get out, do their combat and come back and hopefully help the plane perform and fly better. So that's pretty cool. So I have a flying bell that I have put on the furthest forward and lowest spot I can on my airplane, as you would on a Harley. And uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. The, cur the gremlins are gone now from my plane, and I I'm pretty pumped. So, so here's kind of what I've got coming up next. So I'm actually going to go back. I'm going to get my plexi going in here in both pieces uh, on those sides. I'd love your feedback. What you think of the ABS plastic? If you weigh it, I know some guys are probably saying, wait, wait, wait. It's going to add weight, but I'm putting the Apex, you know, edge performance motor in there, 300 ponies. Uh, I don't think a few extra ounces will hurt. Um, what you think of the bent sticks and what I've done with the ABS plastic and closing that off. Plans, upcoming videos, I'm going to really start bringing all my wiring forward. I've got, like I've said, you've seen in previous videos, brackets are ready, installing avionics. I'm going to bring bringing all that forward. I'm going to make my final determination where I'm going to make my cuts for my G3X Touch, iPad, Mini Insert, Vigilus, uh, and all my buttons. i got to make those final decisions and start uh, pulling that together. And then um, I'm going to start cleaning up and finishing up all of the kind of this brake line forward piece, firewall. And yeah, and that's it. And then I've been doing the same thing with um, the wings. You know, I just been, I've been doing finish work. So here's where I'm gonna put a set of lights on each wing and then on the landing gear, but I've been doing touch-up paint trim, you know, just really trying to clean everything up. So, so there she blows. That is, that is the honey badger right there. And I think I told you guys in, an, uh, maybe when I posted, I've decided I'm naming it the honey badger. I'd never seen or heard of another airplane named the honey badger until I said that to somebody. Then somebody told me they knew of a Highlander named the Honey Badger. So I may have to name it the Honey Badger too. But that's it right there. And uh, hope you guys like it. Love to get your comments. Please like and subscribe. And uh, now we're getting to the point where I'm getting pretty excited. I'm about, I'm nine, just short it. Well, I'm 961 hours into my build. So uh, short of a thousand. And my goal was to be a thousand hours or so. And then my goal is to fly by April and it is first week of March. So really it's gonna come down to the motor. If I could fly by April, May, I'd be so pumped. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm making my plane out of scrap plastic and stuff. Maybe I should call my plane Scrappy 2 because it's really made out of scrappy stuff. Um, just kidding. So. Yeah, I was going with the Honey Badger or the Scrappy Killer. I don't know. But I felt like Scrappy Killer might be too aggressive uh, because I don't even know what this thing's going to do. So I figure the Honey Badger is pretty good. Hey, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Shoot me your feedback. Like and subscribe and fly safe.